Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. With self-care strategies from Chinese medicine, functional medicine, Ayurveda, neuroscience, and beyond. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist and transformation catalyst, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Brody Welch, and today on A Healthy Curiosity, we're going to be talking about how we respond to stress in a habituated way and what that does in our interpersonal relationships and what we might be able to, how we might be able to kind of hack our limiting beliefs and subconscious patterns so that we can show up with more presence and kindness for the people around us and with ourselves. Quarantine, COVID is limiting our ability to have access to our normal stress relieving activities and makes it much more difficult to gather with friends. And if we are in a household with others, it may be much more difficult than ever to get that kind of alone time that we need. And sometimes I've been hearing from a lot of patients and clients that it's it's easy to feel a little bit chronically stressed and chronically irritable. And that's not a fun way to feel. So I wanted to do this episode today about how we can let go of some of the patterned ways that we react to stress in our environment, especially with the people that we care most about, who we are are living with potentially, and what we can do to change them. My guest today is Stacey Claxton. Stacy is a transformational coach and an integrative health practitioner who helps stuck people find freedom and flow. She guides growth seekers, heart-centered healers, and embodied leaders through their biggest blocks to discover their boundless inner power and adding that critical piece, body-centered tools to resolve trauma and rewire the nervous system for lasting change. Her practice blends ancient and modern modalities, including Ayurveda, yoga, breath work, meditation, somatic work, prenatal and postpartum care, EFT, which is a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, functional diagnostic nutrition, and more. Stacey Claxton, welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. Thanks for having me, Brody. Delighted to be here. I am excited to get into this with you because I use EFT with a lot of my clients and a lot of my, in in my coaching programs, like as a a body centered way to deal with the mind. Can you give us a little bit of context about what, first of all, what this modality is and how it is that we can use the body to affect the mind? Yes, it's quite fascinating that we have that power and the body is really the portal into the mind. And EFT is a fantastic way to do that. It brings our awareness into the physical sensations that are coming up for us, the emotions, as well as our habitual mental or mind chatter, our our thought loops that tend to govern our day-to-day living experience. So EFT, emotional freedom techniques, is one of the simplest, most practical, and most versatile methods I've been found for telling the body it's safe. And you asked about the body, and Mm -hmm. essentially that's the biggest factor. We're telling the body it's safe now. We're calming down that nervous system. And then no matter what we bring up next, something traumatic, something painful, something hurtful, whether it's words, memory, distressing, chronic pain, the body feels safe and we can bring it up in a way that allows then our body to work through it, to release it. And that's why it's called emotional freedom techniques. There's a freedom that comes from working through this process. That freedom to not just react, right? It's like, it's the, it's the freedom to, to allow it every moment to be a new moment, not conditioned by the past and whatever patterns we have set up. So tell us a little bit about, about what EFT is and how you practice it. Yes. So emotional freedom technique, EFT, also called tapping, is a tool of radical self-healing, self-discovery, self-empowerment, self-love, self-care, really everything that we can provide for ourselves to get to the root cause of our emotional and physical suffering, returning the body to its natural state of safety and connection. 
on a practical level, it's very hands-on. So we're literally taking our fingertips and we're tapping on specific points in the body that correspond to the endpoints of energy meridians. And I know that makes a lot of sense for you and maybe many of your audience as an acupuncturist, these are the points, kind of like psychological acupuncture. We're pressing these same points except without the needles. And the beautiful thing is it's self-administered. We're able to take our own fingertips to our own body, intuitively move through this sequence of acupressure points, and then bring up uncomfortable emotions, unpleasant sensations, physical pain, difficult memories, or we can also pose questions to our subconscious. And I like to throw out that EFT can be used in that way as well. We often use it for the distress in our lives, but there's another way we can use it to tune in to that infinitely wise inner guide, to ask our intuition for direction, to seek that inner intelligence. And so I love to direct my clients and groups sometimes to use it as a point of inquiry. As you tap, ask yourself questions and start to learn and trust your body to give you the answers. And this process of tuning into the body, running your fingertips through this sequence of points has myriad effects. One, it calms down the nervous system. Like I said, it essentially says to the body, it's safe now. It's safe to re release, express, explore. And that gives us safe access to our emotions. It restores the body's natural energy flow. It activates the immune system, which is great, especially this time of year and considering everything that 2020 has brought for all of us. It reestablishes hormone balance, and that's a big piece. And there's documented research about this. And it also rewires the brain. It literally changes our physiology. And that's when amazing changes happen. That's when a healing state gets activated and our body can shift from a place of distress or dis-ease to one of ease and flow and natural healing. And really, as, as you so beautifully put it, that really starting with safety, we have to start there because if the body believes that we are under threat, and that we might not survive, we're going to be in a, an elevated sympathetic state. And we're not supposed to be there for very long. That's supposed to be for emergencies only. And if we're going through life in a chronically elevated sympathetic state, then that's that's kind of where we're headed for burnout and where so much disharmony comes in uh, physically. And certainly one of the things that that practicing EFT will do, you can, you can just see it like people will, it will immediately ratchet down stress levels. So really potent for anxiety or PTSD or depression. And I believe there's some good studies on those conditions as well. Am I right? Absolutely. So you named some of the big ones with anxiety, PTSD, depression. There's also research showing and anecdotal evidence, plenty of practitioner evidence. Uh, it works on physical pain, chronic diagnoses. It can work with cravings and addictions, compulsive behavior. So it can work on very body centric, very physical pains and, and diagnoses, as well as more of the mental, the habitual pattern, self-sabotage, limiting beliefs. I know we're going to talk more about that today. The beautiful thing is that it can heal and it, it can be used to heal trauma, intergenerational patterns, things that we've been carrying with, with us through our entire lives. It can be used in interpersonal conflicts. It's a great way to improve relationships and we'll explore that as well today. And it can be used in empowering ways. Like I said, really pressing into empowering yourself in your work, your business, your life, greater professional success, or working through financial blocks, developing confidence, and building your spiritual practice, or really tapping into your inner creativity and inspiration, finding greater peace and joy. And, and some of those latter ones are a little bit less metric centered. It's hard to measure Absolutely. those from scientific studies. But going back to that initial question that you had about the science, yes, there is some really compelling research about how tapping works. And we're really getting to that only now. We're not precisely sure how, how tapping works, although there's plenty of 
evidence about the amygdala and the brain and, and calming down the nervous system as we talked about, but it's very obvious that the results are enough proof to show that something is happening in the body. And it really doesn't take much. The current research says that you can take a single hour of tapping and change 72 genes in the body and reduce that stress hormone cortisol. You were talking about that habituated stress response. You can reduce that by 24%. And for comparison, if you go take a nap right now, you might get a cortisol reduction of about 14%. And so that's a significant measurable effect on body systems, on our Absolutely. actual our actual chemistry, our biology, yeah. our immunity, our hormones, and, and actual DNA. And so we're, we're creating lasting change by this practice. And that's the beautiful thing. Often when people tap, they work through something and they no longer need to revisit that issue because something switches and they're able to step into that healing state from that day forward. And that's where the empowered change comes from. And, and that's kind of where it becomes a little bit like too good to be true. I think, mm. you know, like that, that's where to me, like I get all skeptical of like, oh really? You know, like, so it's just that simple. We can just look at our, our deepest, most limiting beliefs and be free from them by tapping on some points. And, and uh, at the same time, it's like, I have seen it firsthand be super potent and and powerful. Although I, I imagine like anything is acupuncture can work on a psycho spiritual level as well, but it it really it really depends on I believe on timing, right? On like whether whether someone and like just and I, I don't exactly know what the other factors are, but if it's uh, if it's up to be healed, it can be a potent thing to to help somebody really transform. Yes. And that's a, that's a really good point that you raise about timing, Brody, because sometimes in a single session, someone has a radical breakthrough. Other people's journeys take longer. They might need to work on the same issue. They might need to peel back the layers or focus on different facets of the same issue. And so tapping is effective. And I found it's actually very effective regardless of what you believe. And you mentioned the word skeptical yeah. in there. And I actually yeah. love working with skeptics and using EFT. Oh, me too. Yeah. I mean, it's like the whole like, you know, that, well, people who reassure me that they believe in acupuncture, it's like, well, you know, your dog or cat doesn't really believe in it or not, but it'll work on them too. Yes. And it's, uh, it doesn't, doesn't so much matter because it is that we're using the body as a bridge to the mind. And these points also matter, right? In the, in the studies, that they've done on EFT where they're using points that are not specifically acupoints. They're, they're using sham points, definitely not as effective. And there's there's obviously, it can be hard to, to manufacture a totally effective control and a lot of these body-mind modalities. But I think it's I think it's it's interesting to see how scientists and researchers are getting around that and and being mm -hmm. able to to still look at at how transformative this practice can be. So I'd love to to get out of the realm of theoretical and make this real for people and and maybe walk us through a an example. Can we do that? Absolutely. Let's let's walk through an right. example. First, mm -hmm. I'd love to explain how the process works, especially those who are brand new. Mm -hmm. Let's do an introduction, very hands-on, tactical, and then we'll get into that example. So the sequence of tapping points is really easy to learn. And I do have a free gift for listeners that makes it even easier. So if you go to soulsandsynergy.com forward slash curiosity, and I, I'm sure Brody will have a, a link to that in the show oh, notes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you can download uh, or have immediate access to a downloadable handout with the tapping points. And that said, for those who are listening on the go, you don't need the handout because I can walk you through it verbally. Um, Simply. Although if you are listening in your car or somewhere like at work, this is kind of that we're going to be a little bit workshoppy for uh, for the next few minutes. And so this is maybe a, a point to to come back to when you have a little time to work through it. Yes. Excellent. Good point there. So the process that I use is quite simple. And for those who have learned EFT before or who might be inclined to look it up online, there are uh, there are different variations out there. And so the, the sequence I use is quite effective with my clients and groups. If you have a slightly different sequence or you throw in a different point, that's just fine. The beautiful thing about tapping is not only does it work if you're a skeptic, it also works if you've got different variations. It's as much an art, really. It's very fluid, as well as a science. 
like you said, Brody, it's good to hit the points, but if you mix up the sequence, that's just fine. So I'm gonna encourage you to pick one hand. There's no need to use both hands or alternate sides. You can start with two, three, or even four fingers on some points. And I encourage you to select a few fingers, get three or four fingers there if you can. That way you hit the point, even if you're not sure you're on it. Again, we're talking about these tiny, tiny points. So as long as you've got a couple fingers, you're bound to hit it. And we're going to start. And I always start at the top of the head. Again, some practitioners might start elsewhere, but I love starting to tap at the top of the head, bringing three, four fingers there. Some people like to tap flat with their fingers. I prefer the finger the fingertips, not the fingernails. And again, starting at the top of the head, remembering that we're connecting to something bigger than we are. And then moving down to the inside of the eyebrow. And this point here is just to the right or left of the bridge of the nose. We're tracing the eye bone. The next point is the side of the eye. This is right next to the temple. It's fairly close to the eye because we're still following the eye bone. And then underneath the eye, very close to the eye, it might feel a little unusual. Again, noticing as you tap on these points, perhaps some feel uncomfortable, some feel tender. All of them are indicators of what's going on in the body systems. And then tapping under the nose, this point is between the nose and the upper lip. And then chin crease beneath the lower lip there. The collarbone point is next. And this point, if you find the collarbone, there's a nice indentation just beneath it. And you can get a few fingers in there. Some people like to stay on the same side of the body. Others find it more comfortable to cross over and do the opposite side here. Either way is just fine. And then side of the body under the arm. So if you take a hand width, it's about four inches or that hand width under the armpit on the side of the body, tapping on the, ri the ribs. And then side of the hand, this part is the fleshy part of the hand right next to the pinky. Let's run through that sequence one more time, simply to get the hang of it. If you're in a so this is the point location part, right? Like this isn't the full process, right? With, no. the, with the full process, we're going to be adding, we're going to be adding some words and some intention, things like that. But this is basically just making sure that we're in the right place and going, getting a feel for the how this flows. Absolutely. Right. So let's get a feel yeah. one more time. Yeah, and let's get a feel. And and meanwhile, I'll layer on what these acupoints are. So this is do 20 or governor vessel 20. It's a place where the all the yang meridians in the body meet. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the inside of the eyebrow? Inside of the eyebrow, we've got bladder two and that little divot of the of the orbit of the eye. And then we're going to go over to gallbladder one on the side of the eye. Places where meridians and are, are places of polarity, right? Things yin and yang change into one another at their opposites. And so going to the close to the end or the beginning of a point, there can be a lot of fast action that takes place there. Next, we're going to go to stomach one in the little, um, there's like a little ridge there. If you palpate softly, you can feel a little ridge directly underneath where the pupil would be. And, under the nose. and then we're at uh, Governor Vessel 26. This is a point that is um, often used to revive people from drowning or fainting in Chinese medicine as like very strong effects on bringing energy up to the head and to the brain. And then we have REN 24, Conception Vessel 24. So here like the meridian that runs in the front of the body and the meridian that runs in the back of the body meet pretty much right here at the at the roof of the mouth. So if you if you bridge the gap with your tongue and you put the tongue in the roof of your mouth, you're making this energetic circuit. Then we're going to go down below the collarbone to kidney 27, right? Or do you do the side of the arm first? You, I do you, the you, you do kidney 27 first. first. I do kidney yeah, 27. So, so this is like kidney, start, kidney one starts at the bottom of the foot. This meridian comes all the way up the body. And then this is because it's the top part of the kidney channel. It's uh, There's an affinity there for the adrenals, right? The most yang aspect of, of kidney energy. And then we're going to go to gallbladder 22, which is the point that's one hand breadth underneath the armpit on the side of the body in the tender space between the ribs there. And this point wraps around the chest, opens the chest for things that are oftentimes stuck in the chest. 
be really potent. And then we finish off with the karate chop point, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right underneath the the little crease of your of your hands in a point that we call small intestine three, which is a point that actually opens up the governor vessel and yeah, it has has all sorts of I could talk about that point for days. Uh, anyway, it's a super effective awesome point. I like to throw in pericardium six, which is two thumbs up from the wrist crease on the Mm -hmm. inner side of the, of the hand, because it's the point for the heart protector and really any, any old trauma essentially that causes, uh, it's like, we want to protect our hearts from things that have hurt us in the past. And so this is a point that, that has an affinity for the emotional pain, especially in the, that we might be holding on to. Really, I think of this as like the PTSD point. Mm-hmm. And I, lo- I love that, Brody, that you throw that point in, in and I often use that too. Uh, so we can throw in the wrist point today for those who will feel yeah, called. Either, either way, just introducing it so that people can, can choose their own adventure with tapping. Yes. Yeah. yes, and beautiful explanation there because those tapping points form the foundation of EFT. It's a simple sequence, but as Brody, as you mentioned, it's quite intricate what's going on in the yeah. body. And, and it's the kind of thing too, like where just to, to throw in there that like treating things like anxiety or depression or PTSD, what from a Chinese medicine standpoint, we're going to be looking at, it's like maybe five people with anxiety would get five different treatment protocols where we would pick different points, like depending on it. Well, this person's anxiety is really rooted in fear. And this person's anxiety is really rooted in their being on the go, right? And being driven. And someone else's anxiety might be rooted in too much fire, too much heat in the body. And it's, so it's like, we, we might be given different point prescriptions for that particular. So in other words, with acupuncture, we can get very specific as to the content of what's going on and they're like and as a practitioner and as a coach I might suggest a, a very specific acupoint that deals with grief for example or that deals with letting go of rage or you know things like that that are that are very tailored to what the person has going on but what I really like about EFT is it doesn't matter like it's like the content we don't have to really get into the story we don't really have to get into the content it's just something that is a standard protocol that has some evidence behind it right. so I- it's uh, anyway yeah And you're so right, Brody, that we don't need to know what the specific points do. We often don't even really need to get into story. I'll explain the basic process um, here momentarily, but we often don't need to get deep into story to know that we're healing and simply shifting the body. Emotion is often our deepest clue in. And, and that's a big piece behind tapping that we don't need the story, we don't yeah. need to re-traumatize ourselves, and we don't need the expertise to use this really effective tool. So let's get into the basic process before we dive into a very specific example. As you Sounds were good. mentioning in there, mm-hmm. we layer in words and, and deeper work over this basic sequence of tapping points. And so the simple process goes like this. Number one, we identify an issue whatever it is that we want to work on. It can be physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual. It can relate to the past, the present, the future, a memory, some sort of distressor, some thought loop that we keep to replaying or a stressful situation. There are myriad things we can tap on because tapping works on just about anything, which is the beauty of, of the practice, how versatile it is. Yet the more specific you can get for your tapping session, the better. So really zoom in, identify the issue. And then number two, check in. How do you feel about the issue? Focus on the level of physical sensation and emotion. What comes up for you around this issue? And notice the intensity of that. You can give it a rating on a scale from zero to 10, 10 being most intense. How would you rate this issue? And then three, we dive in and we start tapping. We go through that sequence of points. We feel all the uncomfortable sensations and emotions around this particular issue. We voice painful, unpleasant, or triggering words. And we can repeat the same word or the same phrase or same statement with each tapping point. Or we can vary what we say depending on what's coming up for us in the moment. So it could be one statement. Then we move on to the next point, another statement. The key here is that we're not overthinking it. It's not really about the words. It's more about how we're feeling and letting full expression, honest expression come out. And often the more over the top, the more exaggerated, the better. (laughs) This is our opportunity to release the bold, raw truth of how we really feel without sugarcoating. And then after we've tapped a round, two rounds, several rounds, we pause, check in. 
Take a deep breath. Notice what's coming up for us now. Has anything shifted? Is there something new that's calling our attention? And then we continue the process again. We tap again. We, we pause and we check in again, honoring everything that's coming for us and simply trusting our inner guide to move us through our unique process. Eventually, we hit this point where we can invite opportunity. And as you feel ready, maybe you're tapping on all the hurt and the pain and the distress and the discomfort and these emotions. And suddenly you notice something shifts and then we can tap into the possibility of change. We might express new insights, new beliefs, behaviors, new emotions, new thoughts, and, and really feel and tap in the shifts in our body. I do discourage people from forcing themselves to this place, though. The goal is not to force an outcome. It's not to get ourselves to fix, quote unquote, fix our problem or change our mind or judge our feelings or kind of create this optimistic, positive affirmation. We often get there, but let yourself express your truth before going there. And then reassess, check in with the original issue bring it to mind again, rate it on a scale from zero to 10, notice any shifts, you might decide to keep tapping, you might reflect, pause, celebrate your progress, what you've noticed, new insights, and then come back for more when you have more time. That's it, that's the basic process, bringing in some words, bringing in the feeling, tapping, pausing, tapping, pausing, until you feel like you reach a point of resolution. Tapping can offer powerful relief for stress, anxiety, and even pain in the moment. But what about dialing down the stress, anxiety, and pain in the first place? I love helping clients investigate what they're buying into that keeps them in this cycle of stress, overwhelm, numbing out, and then feeling stuck and frustrated. When you change your mindset, you change the behaviors that stem from that mindset, making it so much easier to do the things you know you need to do to take care of yourself. Things like meditation, qigong, breathing, exercise, maintaining stable blood sugar. I'd love to help you create these habits of resilience. Whether it's a six month membership in my Level Up Your Life Healthy Habits course or personalized one on one coaching with me, I specialize in helping self aware people who overwork and overserve embody self respect. I've got a limited number of one on one coaching slots available for 2021. So to get on my wait list, visit brodywelch.com forward slash about and apply. If DIY is more your speed, check out Level Up Your Life over at brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an IE and Welch with a CH. Now back to the show. All right. Well, let's get into it. Yes. And I do want to dive in with an example. There are two questions I'd love to throw in here because yeah. they come up really often. And I want to make sure we anyone listening doesn't have some obstacles to getting started. And, and first, I do want to talk about the words that we use because we often start with this quote unquote negative round. We start and we express all the hurt, all the pain, all the heavy stuff, everything that feels icky and uncomfortable and distressing. And we honor all of it before we move into these affirmative rounds of tapping. And I do want to point that out because often I get the question, well, why would I want to voice that quote unquote negative, all the uncomfortable, all the painful stuff out loud? Won't I simply attract more of it? And it's a valid question. But quite the contrary, we, we tap and we express all of it because we're already speaking that over ourselves and living out in our body. And the tapping and the expressing it gives it a chance to go away. It gives it a chance to be fully expressed and released rather than get stuck and trapped in the body. I think that's a really important point because it's it's the kind of thing where like if you're in touch with something that's going on in your body, whether it's pain or a limiting belief, it's like by by speaking it, you're not necessarily amplifying it. You're not like making it your intention forever, but you're honoring yourself and you're not in denial, right? It's here anyway. And so it's like your your ability to get over something requires your acceptance that it's here in the first place. And so it's really starting from a place of, of acknowledging and accepting so that we don't have to live there forever. So it's not making like, a, I declare that I am forever and always hurt by this. It's like you, you're you're naming it so that you can move through it. Right. And your, your choice of words there was key, Brody, that it's honoring, it's accepting. We're expressing 
a core truth of who we are. And that's part of the process. And it certainly is part of of tapping. So that's one important point. And then the a second question I often get about the words is questions, people saying, Stacy, I'm not good with words. I don't know what to say. What if I say the wrong thing? Mm-hmm. What if I mess it up? And I get it because if you search for tapping or if you, you've done some tapping scripts online, it, it makes it seem like there's some magical formula and the words are what's creating the change. And the refreshing truth is there isn't a formula and it's not about the words and you can't do it wrong. Well, and there is this framework, right, that we start with, which has to do like with like framing the issue and then the, the statements, I deeply and completely accept myself. Mm-hmm. And you might not be talking about anything that has that has anything to do with self-acceptance or it really that it may not resonate to say, well, even though I have this back pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. Or even though, even though I believe I'm not enough, I deeply and completely accept myself. It's like, how does that even make sense? Right? You know, or that that neither of those make sense. And and yet, this is the seed phrase that is often put forth as as a starting spot. And so. I encourage people to not worry about it, right? To just that, that it's like, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense, we're going to just, we're just going to say it anyway. Yeah. And there are actually (laughs) two really, really uh, key directions that you can take there. And I, I take, um, I use both in my practice. There is that setup statement, even though I'm feeling this way, I deeply and completely accept myself. Sometimes I dive right into tapping without the initial setup and we Mm -hmm. get into the acceptance later. And and I might just for the sake of offering another perspective for your audience, flow with that more fluid practice today. Sounds good. Because it's often a barrier when we feel like the need to say a certain formula. And I do a lot of silent tapping actually with my clients and my groups. Um, So let's try the other way since a lot of people are familiar with the setup statement and the formula as we dive into our example right now. So let's do it. Um, Brody, you mentioned a lot of women come to you. A lot of people in your practice have these pattern responses like taking things personally, not not feeling enough. What What shows up most often? What kind of things do you hear? Well, right now, just lately with people being stuck under the same roof together, it's that somebody, for example, isn't pulling their weight with household chores. Mm -hmm. So then the person concludes, I have to do everything myself. This person, it clearly is not like they don't care about me enough to pull their weight. It doesn't matter to them to to be cooperative or just really like being being overly triggered and and irritable with the people around them because because it feels personal right these these actions of people going through their daily life it feels like an affront Great examples. And yes, I think we can all resonate with some flavor of that. So I'm going to invite those of you listening along and Brody, you can do this along, along with us. And if you are, like Brody said, if you're driving, this might be the time to put pause and come back to the podcast later. But if you are in a comfortable place, go ahead, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, come into a comfortable seat and give your, your imagination permission right now to bring you back to a specific instance similar to the one Brody just shared, something where you felt triggered, where someone said something that you took really personally, something that made you feel irritable, that made you feel like you didn't matter, no one cared, you have to pull your own weight. Maybe you felt judged, condemned, accused, rejected, abandoned, whatever it is. Someone said something, a recent interaction perhaps, and you took it really personally and it didn't feel good. So just recall that scene right now. Again, the more specific we can get, the better. Pick one scene. Notice where you are, who you're with. Name this person. Who are you with? What did they say? What are they wearing? What was their tone of voice? What's the smell in the room? Really set the context. Again, getting really specific with it. And then name this scene. Give it a name. And say it aloud in your own space. Name this scene. Say it again. The scene where so-and-so said this one thing and it felt so hurtful and personal. And notice what happens in your body, how intense it is, what emotions come up and how intense those emotions are, what sensations are there and how intense those are as you start to get worked up thinking about it. 
And then on a scale from zero to 10, 10 being the most intense rate, the emotional intensity right now, this scene, name the scene, is intense for me. And this is the number. And then feeling all that uncomfortable sensation, emotion, and energy in, in your body. Take a nice full breath. And we're going to start tapping, diving right in at the top of the head. Full deep breaths. Feeling all those uncomfortable sensations and emotions inside of the eyebrow, feeling in your body the intensity that's coming up for you around this particular scene. And go ahead, say the name of the scene again. Nice deep breath, side of the eye. Say that name of the scene one more time. And then tapping under the eye. Repeat what that person said. What did they say? What did they do? Say it aloud. Nice deep breath under the nose. What did they say? And say it aloud with the tone of voice that they used. Maybe it was a disrespectful or derogatory tone. Maybe it was nasty or snarky or malicious. Maybe it was just thoughtless, like they're careless. Deep breath, chin crease, tapping there. Say it aloud again. What did they say? Collarbone point, exaggerate their voice, bring in all their mean intentions, how awful it felt, how irritable you feel even thinking about it. And moving under the arm, tapping there. Notice what starts to happen in your body, hearing these words. Nice deep breath, the side of the hand. What's happening in your body now? Feel it as you tap. You can simply notice the feeling or you can bring in some words, tapping those wrists together, getting that wrist point. Maybe you notice there's some tension somewhere, something in your stomach or your throat or your chest. Back up to the top of the head, acknowledging, honoring how you're feeling in your body right now. Maybe you feel like you can't speak up, you just have to do all the work yourself. No one cares. Deep breath inside of the eyebrow. Acknowledge, honor, express all the uncomfortable sensations you're experiencing right now. Side of the eye. This overwhelming feeling of Aim it. Give yourself permission to express it. So if I were doing, if I were going to amplify some of this inner dialogue, it could be, I was so irritated and I felt this pressure in my chest and like I wanted to explode. And then I felt shame for getting so mad over something so petty. And then I, like there, there can be physical yes. things. There can be emotional things. You can just, just run the whole scene in your mind. As Beautiful. This is coming up, right? Yes. Blow it up under the eye, blow it up, make it big. I was so ashamed, so irritated. And then I was mad at myself for getting frustrated and whatever's coming up it can be physical mental emotional knowledge honor express all the discomfort I thought I was more evolved than this why did it get to me so badly mm -hmm. wow you know like mm -hmm. all all the things all of the layers in the ranging from what was happening to what happens to you physiologically to what stories you made up in your head around it Yes, and you can pause, pause the podcast right now and tap and express and rant and rage <laughs> and then come back tapping under the nose here and speaking aloud into your own space. I honor this is how I feel. I accept this is how I feel moving to the chin crease, bringing some honor and acceptance into the process. And collarbone point, I give myself permission to feel this way. Notice if that feels new to you. Maybe you haven't really given yourself permission to feel this fully. Well, wow, giving ourselves permission is, is huge if we're ever going to get something up and out of the body. It's, it's immense. So deep breath under the arm. I give myself full permission to feel this way to express this truth, to express every single facet of how I feel. 
and take that permission seriously. Again, you might need to pause here and give yourself permission and keep expressing. Side of the hand and again, express the truth no matter how uncomfortable it is. It could be how unworthy you feel. Maybe you, you say that aloud. I feel so unworthy. I feel incapable, invisible. I have to do this all myself. No one cares. I'm not enough. I don't matter. I'll never measure up. I'm such a failure, whatever it is. Keep tapping. Tap on the wrists there. Speaking your truth. How does this interaction make you feel about yourself? And a nice deep breath, top of the head. And maybe you start to notice this is a really familiar feeling. And often this is where tapping brings us. Wow, I've, I've felt this way before. Maybe it goes way, way back. And maybe there's a memory that's coming up. Maybe this is a truth you learned at a young age. Nice deep breath inside of the eyebrow. Maybe you felt this way for a long time. And, and your spouse or your kids or that roommate, it simply is bringing it up again. And this is a really old issue. And if a memory comes up, honor it. Again, tapping side of the eye here. I honor how I'm feeling right now. I accept how far back this goes. I honor the part of me that feels this way. Whatever it is, bringing honor and acceptance to whatever it is that comes up for you. Deep breath under the eye. And it makes so much sense that I feel that way. Bring that in too. Sometimes we forget that everything that we feel is really logical. There's a reason our body feels this way. And so honor your body's logic right now. Deep breath under the nose. It makes so much sense that I feel this way. I needed to feel this way for some reason. And again, you can always hit pause at any point and honor why it's logical for you to feel this way, for you to respond this way. Deep breath, chin crease point. And one more time, I give myself permission, full permission to feel this way. Collarbone point, I give myself the love and attention I need right now. That may be hard for some of you. I give myself love and attention. Wow, I'm not supposed to give myself love and attention. I'm supposed to just do the work and be quiet and take care of everyone else. So that might actually bring up even more emotion. If that's the case, let it move. I give myself love and attention, as much attention as I need right now to heal. And side of the body under the arm. Again, you can press pause, tapping. Um, on your own as anything comes up, expressing, honoring your truth, giving yourself the love and the attention, full permission that you need to express whatever's here for you. And then nice deep breath, side of the hand. We're going to move into a little bit of a shift here. Again, you can pause and, and continue tapping on your own. But take an opportunity here at the side of the hand to notice if there's been a shift, something you're noticing that feels different in your body and your mind and the emotions that are coming up. And those wrist points tapping there, noticing a, a shift in my body and speak it aloud. Notice how what's feeling different. Maybe it's really subtle. Maybe that tension that you felt or that anger, or that frustration or that hurt has shifted in some way. Just notice any shift in your body. Nice deep breath, top of the head. I'm noticing a shift right now. And it feels good to express this. Feels good to express what I've kept inside for a really long time. And you might even say that aloud. Wow, it's good to give myself permission to express this. And tapping inside of the eyebrow. It makes so much sense that I took so-and-so I took their words and their behavior so personally. Deep breath, side of the eye. I did that in the past. It kept me safe. It served me in some way. Again, honor the fact that your body did something logical. That reaction had a reason. And then tapping under the eye. But maybe that isn't serving me anymore. Notice how that lands. Maybe it's not serving me anymore. Deep breath under the nose. Maybe I don't have to take it so personally. That's a new thought. You might even speak that aloud. That's a new thought. 
Maybe I don't have to take it personally. Maybe I have a choice to increase. Maybe I have a choice. Huh. That's an interesting thought. Collarbone point, I get to decide. I get to interpret what they said. I get to interpret their behavior. I get to decide how it affects me. Wow, I have a choice. Take some moments to tap that in. I have a choice. And then side of the body, under the arm. Maybe you come in with a new conclusion like, wow, maybe their words actually didn't mean what I thought they did. Or maybe their action has nothing to do with me at all. And they were triggered by something else and they took it out on me. Maybe it was their stuff and I've been giving them my power all along. Notice that. Side of the hand. I've been giving them my power. And give yourself a, an opportunity now. I give myself permission right now to take back my power, to reclaim my energy. I get to decide who I am now and what it says about me. And then tapping on that wrist point, I'm going to anchor it in with a new image. So let your imagination show you right now what it's like to kind of bring that energy back into your own body, the energy, the power that you were giving to someone else. See it coming back to you. See it coming back to you. And maybe as that happens, feel yourself get a little bigger, a little taller, feel your spine stretch and your, your chest open up, tapping on the top of the head, feeling yourself reach a little bit taller. Taking a full breath here, filling with energy and notice that maybe that other person gets a little smaller or their voice changes and, and let's roll with this. Let's have a little fun inside of the eyebrow. Go ahead and say those words again. But now imagine that you're talking to a squeaky little mouse, a small little person in front of you saying those same hurtful words, what they said before that triggered you so much. Say those words, get a little playful, get a little dramatic side of the eye there. Say those words again, high pitched, squeaky little voice. Under the eye, say those words one more time. Under the nose and notice what happens in your body. Notice the shifts. How do you feel now? Maybe there's a little bit of a smile. Maybe there's a little bit of, of a swagger, a sense of confidence. Maybe there's a new truth to increase. This is your opportunity to anchor in any new truth that you're noticing. Maybe where before you felt unworthy, you're noticing, wow, I, I actually am worthy. This had nothing to do with me. I'm worthy, I'm capable, I matter. Wow, I actually do have help, I do have support. I don't need to go, go it alone. Tapping on the collarbone point, it's safe for me to be seen. It's safe to ask for help. They didn't mean it the way I, I thought they did. I'm, I'm speaking up. I feel good. I'm confident. I am lovable. I am enough. Whatever it is, express your truth. How do you see and experience and feel yourself now? Who are you? And as you tap under the arm here, feel yourself bathing in this new truth. Who are you? Smile into it, declare it boldly, and take some opportunities, tapping on the side of the hand to express your new truth, whatever feels most true to you. Could be I'm strong, I'm capable, I'm worthy, I can ask for help, I get support I need, I'm deserving, I'm valuable, whatever it is. Express your truth, wrist crease, and tapping there on the wrists. Who are you now? Nice deep breath, top of the head, finishing here, the highest point of our body. What is it that you feel now? Maybe you feel stronger, more capable, more powerful, courageous. Maybe you feel free and lighter and more optimistic. And maybe you feel more clear about what's really going on and who you really are. And say aloud, it feels so good in my body. I feel safe and secure in who I am feels so good in my body. Let's pause with a nice deep breath, letting the hands return to the lap. And check in. 
Notice if anything shifted for you. If you're still tapping, you can hit pause and continue mm -hmm. anchoring in some of those new beliefs or working through something that's still triggering. You can also bring to mind that original issue and rate it again on that scale from zero to 10 and notice if perhaps it's quite different from when you started. And then take a moment to celebrate yourself as you feel ready, as you reach a point of completion for the courage to do that kind of work. And Brody, what did you notice? Well, thank you, first of all, for leading us through that. It was such a great way of really internalizing what you're talking about. I get this visual of being able to see the roots of where some of my reactivity comes from. And it's like, I can, it, it almost feels like I'm holding up a magnet in the present moment. And all of these past incidents are, are like, are that energy from the past is like, like coming back to, to this magnet coming, like reclaiming this energy from, from the past is that that's at least one visual that came to me. Yes. And I love that you have visuals like that because I see that all the time with my clients and groups. And for anyone listening along who had their own visual, use that. And you might feel kind of the magnetic energy. And then you might, as you're tapping, feel how it shifts and maybe do something different with that magnet or different with that other visual. So use this experience, make it your own, allow any visualizations to guide you where to take it next. So if people had a paradoxical reaction, like where if people went through that, usually I'd say nine times out of 10, people feel more calm, more centered, better in some way. What if that didn't happen for someone? Great question. Because intensity amplifying does not mean that tapping isn't working. It's actually another great sign. Sometimes we've kept things stuffed down so much that tapping simply opens it up. And if that's the case for you, keep tapping. That's the, the most encouraging thing I can say. If you're feeling more intense, more overwhelmed, pick one thing about how you're feeling, zoom in on it and tap. Other people might notice kind of releases, physical sensations, crying, coughing, burping, yawning, jolts of the electricity, and it feels intense. Again, that's all part of the process. Trust the tapping to do the work. You can Ignore the words if that feels too overwhelming. Drop into your body, keep breathing, keep tapping. And as you calm down your nervous system, you will move through it. And there's freedom on the other side. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for unpacking that for us a little bit too. It just anytime we go to an old memory, anytime that we're looking, we're, we're bringing it up to be healed, we actually get our fingerprints all over it. We smudge it a little bit, we change it. And that's part of how this is working is that we're, we're dialing down the emotional intensity associated with it. We're, we're reinterpreting something that, that we gave it meaning in the past and we're giving it different meaning in the future. So in a sense, it's like, that's kind of what we're doing is we're taking our hands and we're molding the clay of these historical events in our lives so that it takes a different shape. Yes. And I love the way you describe that, like molding clay, because that's a beautiful analogy to what we're doing here. We're not changing the past. We're not erasing memories. We're simply giving them a new spin so that we can look at it and hold the lessons of our lives and the challenges we've been through and not be triggered by them, that we can own them and be empowered by them. When people are, when I suggest that people use tapping, I'll, I'll usually encourage that they go through a few rounds. Is, do you have a particular length of time that you like to assign to your clients? Like, is there a magic window of like how much is enough? That's a great question. And one I get quite often because often people say, I don't have time in my yeah. life to add one more thing. I don't want to go through a super lengthy process. Sometimes I will carve out intentional time. And certainly when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one client work, I work a lot with trauma and deep-rooted issues. And so we'll carve out a whole session to tap and work on all these different pieces that they're experiencing. That said, simply a round or two is enough to change your physiology. And so if you don't have a big chunk of time, you can commit to doing two rounds of tapping, a few deep breaths on both ends, and that's it. And notice what changes. You can also tap in the moment and just do a round, just do a minute or two. You feel triggered. You feel anxious. You realize you just took something personally. You're about to interact with someone and you know it's not going to go well. 
do a minute or two of tapping. That's all it takes to often bring your body, mind, and spirit into a more cohesive, calmer, empowered, and resourceful state. You can even do it with your mind. I, I've, mm, I've yes. definitely, I've done tapping on myself in my own head while I'm in an interaction. Brody, that's great. And I, I also use it. That's <laughs> another great ways to, way to use mind tapping is for sleep. Some people are really anxious these days and they're having trouble sleeping. And the actual tapping while you're sleeping tends to stimulate more because you got your hands around, yes. moving around. But if you can mind tap while you're trying to fall asleep, that's also really helpful. Another situation could be, like you said, if you're in an interaction and you can't tap, you can imagine yourself tapping or you can pick one point and sometimes like a hand point or a wrist point, simply massaging that point. It's discreet enough that no one's going to notice, but it's enough to bring you back to your body, aware of what's triggering you now and calm yourself down. Well, Stacy, I really appreciate this super informative, practical demonstration that you've given all of us. And if people are interested in connecting with you, what's the best place for them to go? Yes, great question. The best place to go is soulsinsynergy.com. That's S-O-U-L-S in synergy.com. There's some more information there about me and my practice. Most specifically, there's information about my group program. And one thing we didn't specifically talk about is why tapping in groups is so powerful. And it's something that I am a strong advocate for partially because I've seen incredible results with group tapping in my own experience as a coach and as a practitioner. But for those of those people who are interested in the science, I know we talked about the the science earlier about gene change and cortisol reduction. They actually did a recent study that was a follow up to the original study about what happens to to cortisol and they had people tap in groups not just one-on-one with a practitioner and there was a really significant change in cortisol and it was much higher than the original i think it was in the the realm of 40 43% reduction in cortisol when people were tapping in groups where it was a 24% when they were tapping one-on-one with a practitioner that's huge and yeah that's really significant it's very significant when we're talking about living in a stressed world. So not only is there science behind it, but it also makes sense because as human beings, we're wired for connection. And that's part of the reason that there's so much stress these days because our connection has shifted. It's changed. You were talking about being in close quarters with people, but also not having the other supportive relationships that we normally have, the social opportunities. And so when we can tap with one another in a safe, supportive way, it allows us to take our inner work deeper. It illuminates some blind spots. We create connection with one another. We realize we're not alone in our challenges and that's huge, not feeling alone. And the other big piece of it is this aspect of expression. When we have our expression validated and honored, not just by yourself, but by other people who really receive and hear us, it sends those healing messages deeper. And so that's one of the reasons I'm such a strong advocate for group tapping. So you will find those of you who decide to check out soulsandsynergy.com, my group tapping program called Freedom and Flow. I invite our, our global community to come together once each week to tap through our, our stressors, our fears, in real time and to support one another. Um, For those of you who want to start on your own, remember that you have that handout. It's in the show notes where you can get the tapping points and post that somewhere as a reminder for yourself that you have access to this really powerful tool at your own fingertips anytime, anywhere. And then finally, there are a few of you who might be listening and, and saying, wow, I have deeper trauma, or I'm afraid to tap on my own. It feels scary and overwhelming because I'm not sure if I can handle what comes up. And if that's true for you, or you have a big stuck point in your life and you haven't been able to move through it on your own, then reach out to me at Stacy S-T-A-C-Y at soulsandsynergy.com. Again, I assume that'll be in the, the show Absolutely. notes somewhere. Yep. Uh, reach out to me and, and let's jump on a, a, a quick call uh, a personal power strategy session that's free to you so that I can see how I can support you. It might be the next healing relationship that you're looking for. Well, Stacy, thank you so much again for this wonderful offering and for the work that you're doing in the world. To everyone who is watching and or listening, I wish you 
maximum emotional freedom. Thanks for listening today. To check out the show notes, get on my email list or drop me a line, head to brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an IE and Welch with a CH. I'd love to hear from you. If you learned something new or feel inspired to try something different in your life, I'd love for you to pay it forward by sharing this episode with a friend who you think could also benefit and give them a reason to listen. You'll be helping to create a world where we encourage each other to embody self-respect. Till next time, be good to yourself.